Good afternoon, everyone. Our next keynote slides would be our speaker is Alex Kim, the ecosystem lead at Zeta Chain, and he will be presenting us building universal blockchain for all of crypto. Welcome. Sounds good. Well, I know it's a pretty small crowd here. I'm pretty sure you're all getting very tired of listening to me and seeing me here on stage. Um, but I'll keep this very short. It won't take up the entire 20 minutes. Um, but I wanted to talk to you about um, the collective vision of Web3. I talked a little bit about it in my previous panel. But the collective vision of Web3 really goes to onboarding next billions of users from Web2 into Web3. And just honestly speaking, I think the crypto product UI UX is very terrible. Um, a lot of the solutions and a lot of the new solutions that we're currently marketing into the ecosystem, into the broader crypto markets are actually creating shorter term solutions for longer term problems. Um, standard based messaging protocols have actually created more liquidity fragmentation in my opinion by creating more wrapped versions of different bridge stable coins. Um, more L1s and L2s and so many bridges are actually siloing users and siloing different liquidity. Um, from majority of users. We can see this from perp dexes like Hyperliquid, um, as well as SIN features for every chain that they integrated. Um, the volume is different for every new chain that they integrate. So actually, we're not even working towards the collective vision of Web3 in a bull market, maybe during a bear market, but we're not quite there yet. So with Zeta Chain, oops. So I want to present to you a problem that I previously talked about. There are so many L1s, so many L2s, and so many bridges that are currently out there. And I guess the mission for all these L1s and L2s and so many bridges and aggregation protocols all have like a common short-term solution together, which is aggregating every single DEX from every single protocol or integrating every single L1 and L2 and just um, enabling interoperability. But between all those different chains. However, there are a lot of limitations to that current solution right now. There's no actual data transfer. There's no transfer of data between all of these different chains. There's only transfer of value, which is the token representation itself. And it presents a lot of users. I mean, it presents a lot of problems for two types of categories that I think are in Web3. There's users and there's developers. I want to go into a bit on the developer perspective. I've been talking to a lot of developers. I've been seeing, I've been in this space for quite a bit. I think the common problem for developers is when there's a new chain that has a lot of users or there's a new chain that's currently hyped in the market, um, there's a lot of hype to do a multi-chain approach. And current multi-chain approaches is um, deploying a separate smart contract on all those different chains individually. For example, if you're originally on Ethereum or you're originally on BNB chain and you want to have some sort of um, multi-chain approach to Solana or whatever the hype chain is, you have to deploy a separate contract. And if you have a token, you have to work with a market maker or maybe you have it yourself and you have to create a separate pool of that same token on a different DEX. That liquidity may not always be the same as the one that you have on your home chain. So you're creating a pretty big liquidity fragmentation and you're actually going to create more user fragmentation as well. On the user side, there's so many chains and there's so many apps that have different siloed approaches to a multi-chain approach. What I mean by this is, I'm pretty sure all of us know here, when we're, in a, when we're using a dApp, we have to switch between different networks and we have to connect different wallets and we have to reload our browser every single time. Um, we have different assets and we have, yeah, we pretty much have different assets on every different chain. So it requires a lot of complicated steps. The current, I, I talked a bit about it in the previous panel, but the on-ramping process of receiving crypto and the actual action of depositing that crypto, whether it's using it for an in-game transaction or a popular DeFi transaction to deposit into a pool. There's a lot of user complexity and a lot of user steps. Um, so the product UI UX is overall not that simple right now. So the current multi-chain solutions, I think I already talked about it. I'm just gonna skip this one. Um, but it goes into what Zeta Chain's mission is. Um, with all these L1s, with all these L2s, and all these bridges, and all these different bridge aggregation protocols, what if there was one single blockchain that could connect to any single L1, roll up L2, and even non-EVM chains? This is what Zeta Chain does. 
Zeta Chain is building an interoperability layer one. We're already live on mainnet that connects to any non EVM chain, L1, L2, and rollup. We're not in the business of integrating every single chain that's currently out there. Right now, we're connected with Bitcoin, Solana, major EVM chains with Sui coming in the future as well. So Zeta Chain has three unique features. Um, we're not too focused on TPS, faster, better, decentralized, the typical trifecta when it comes to new L2s, L3s, L1s. Um, Zeta Chain is more focused on the interoperability layer on a smart contract level. Compared to most messaging protocols, there are several limitations to messaging protocols um, where you can't really deploy smart contracts, you can't read smart contracts, you can't read data from multiple chains and execute smart contracts across different chains. What Zeta Chain does is we have a common smart contract layer that that's able to connect to any chain. We have the ability to read and write smart contracts across any chain. Right now, if you're a user on Ethereum or if you're a user on Solana, you're able to use your same wallets and your same gas assets and your same stables from those respective chains without any bridging, without any wrapping, and using an asset or an, without, um, with using an app on Zeta Chain. So I think I'll s simplify the architecture here a little bit. We have our Comet BFT consensus. It's our consensus layer. Um, we have our core validators, which is pretty much any other validator like any other L1 um, that's currently validating the Zeta Chain transactions. What makes us very interesting is our observer validators and our TSS signers. Our TSS signers allow us to deploy a single custody address on any non-EVM chain and EVM chain. Um, so any user deposits, any, any sort of smart contract call will be collected by and observed by observer validators. Our observer validators are pretty much a subset of our validators that run validators of every single chain that we're connected to, always reading the incoming deposits and incoming transactions coming into Zeta chain. And the TSS signers are the ones that have the custody addresses for all of the native assets that are being brought to Zeta chain and being used on Zeta chain as well. And then we have our singular liquidity pools and our EVM layer. So how do I translate this? We have a universal DEX, which we call. Um, it's pretty much a DEX, but instead of the same chain to chain swapping, a user on Zeta chain can connect their Bitcoin wallet or their phantom wallet on Solana. And they're able to choose a source chain, let's say native Bitcoin, and they're able to choose any asset on any destination chain. They can swap between native Bitcoin to USDC on Solana without any wrapping or without any bridging. So the way that this works, and I'll try to illustrate it through here, is once the user executes, and it's as simple as clicking swap. Once the user connects their Bitcoin wallet and they approve their Bitcoin transaction, that Bitcoin gets sent to our TSS address. That calls a smart contract on Zeta chain to issue a ZRC20 wrapped asset version of that Bitcoin. That gets swapped into our liquidity pool that has Bitcoin Sol, so that Bitcoin gets swapped into Sol. That ZRC20 Solana gets custody, and the native Solana on the custody address on Solana gets withdrawn back to the user. All that complexity is done by the protocol itself. So even though I just confuse you, you don't have to worry about that. The user experience is just as simple as a one-click product UI UX of swapping from one chain to another. Doesn't matter if you're EVM or not. So our smart contract layer, I just talked a bit about this. We have the ability to read and write across any um, chains that we're integrated with. And I'll go a little bit more about that. Um, I want to go into the bridging and messaging just a little bit, and again, for anyone that just recently joined. Um, right now, for bridging and messaging, when you launch a token, you have a source chain, and you choose any other chain that you want to be have a multi-chain approach with, and it's using a custody and min function, where it's just replicating all the data for your source, um, for your source token on the source chain, and it's pretty much just custody and minting that same token across any other chain. So most of the current quote unquote multi-chain lending markets or cross-chain money markets are simply just making their tokens multi-chain and using that token as the standard for all money markets or liquidity pools that they're live on. It's not really multi-chain. With universal apps on Zeta Chain, with our universal smart contract layer, it's a hub and spoke model. So what that does instead of a circular model with bridges and messages where it's one chain to another, think of us as a bus terminal. Think of us as a way where we handle all sorts of bridging, messaging, and also data transfer on Zeta Chain. So a user on any chain can just call a smart contract on Zeta Chain to do any sort of function on a different chain. 
So think of us as a terminal that's able to take in assets from one chain or any sort of smart contract calls from one chain and execute it on another. Some of the use cases for this that we also have live is a cross-chain yield aggregator. So a user, in addition to that swap example I just gave, in addition to the swap, now you're able to deposit whatever asset you got into any liquidity pool on our connected chains in one single click. So a user on USDC on Ethereum can deposit that USDC into a liquidity pool on Radium in one single click. And that feature is already live as well, without any bridging and without any wrapping. We also introduce Gateway. Gateway is our V2 of smart contracts on Zeta chain. We introduced this several months ago with all of our connected chains where a user can now execute smart contract calls. A developer can now execute smart contract calls on different chains from Zeta chain. So if you wanted to swap an asset and now you wanted to deposit that and or um, launch that into an AI agent launcher on Solana, you can now do that in a one single product click UI UX as well. So I talked a bit about this, about TS assigners and observer validators and how, that, how all of that works. But simply put, every single chain just has one gateway contract and one TSS address where users deposit. Our validators called observers pick it up and we do all the sexy messaging, all the sexy bridging ourselves, um, el completely eliminating third party bridges as a central reliance. Um, I, I would like to emphasize that Zeta chain, I think it's quite develop I think it's quite different from a user experience as well as a developer um, experience point of view. For developers, it's really just as simple as just deploying one set of smart contracts on Zeta chain and immediately out of the box you get Bitcoin Wallet Connect, Solana Connect, and EVM wallet support. Um, it's really just as simple as that. And for if you ever do launch a token or if you ever do want to have a DeFi protocol, you just have to um, provide one source of liquidity instead of having to do a multiple liquidity source approach. For users, um, instead of switching your network all the time, connecting to different chains for any multi-chain based apps, you can connect any of your wallets on Zeta chain and use those assets from any of your connected chains. Um, yeah, this is our community so far. Um, you can see it all here. I won't go too much about that. Um, these are our partners that have generously supported us so far as well. And we're always looking for more dApps and more developers and more users on Zeta chain particularly more dApps to really build out interesting use cases on Zeta chain, um, any cross-chain based applications besides any token transfers. So if there are any developers out there and you're very interested in what we're building right now, we have dedicated 5% of our token allocations towards grants to our builders as well. That's pretty much it, thank you. Sure. So for Bitcoin, um, for every EVM transaction that gets called on Bitcoin, it needs to have an OP return data function. So for example, I'm just going to go through the DEX example that you're talking about when a user connects their Bitcoin wallet to do a swap into Ethereum. So when the user connects their Bitcoin wallet for every outgoing Bitcoin transaction that um, gets deposited into Zeta chain address, it needs to have a message attached to that Bitcoin transaction. Um, we have a simple line of code. It's, um, it's an OP return function that calls a smart contract on Zeta chain to, in the back end, issue out the ZRC20 equivalent to do the swapping and withdrawal on any asset on any chain um, from there. Um, but we use OP return data function for that. Sure, the key, the key is distributed amongst all of our observer signers. So the private key is distributed, it's very similar to how DoorChain does it with their private keys as well. For every single um, custody address of the chains, that private key is distributed amongst all of our observer signers. So where are the observer signers? So they're in the uh, Bitcoin? Yes, observer signers are running validators of all the connected chains. So they're not just running validators of Zeta chain, they have to run validators of Bitcoin, ETH, exactly. We have, in total, we have 13 observer signers that are running validators of all of our connected chains, including Bitcoin. Wait, so this observer runs in the, like a one observer runs in the Bitcoin and one runs in Solana? No, every one of our observer signers are required to run validators of every single connected chain. Uh, is that called a private declaration? 
Um, I wouldn't say there's a delay, but there's an incentive model where we can slash um, observer signers if they're not doing it properly or if there's a delay on um, observed transactions from the custody addresses. Sure. Correct. Mm -hmm. So they're pretty much voting. So every time, let's say that you deposit native Bitcoin into that custody address, all the observer signers are picking up that transaction and they're voting to create that ZRC20 equivalent. Yeah. So how many copies over here does each address? Does that mean 13 copies? I'm trying as hard to answer your questions. I can get back to you on that. I actually don't know the answer to that question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you rotate I can get back to you on that. Okay, cool. I, I actually don't have, I, I don't want to say the wrong answer to you. Okay, cool. All right, cool. Thank you. Thank you.